You know, sometimes you just think the universe is trying to tell you something. You're working really hard and it's just not working. It's just not working. I got dropped by a label, an album got shelved, and、uh, I never really understood why, or it was never explained to me. It's okay to not know, and it's okay to need some time out. It's okay that I went to Kurumban Creek in the Gold Coast of Australia and stand up paddled, and that was my healing, and that was my, you know, like what do I need to do to take care of myself? It's easy to sit there and kind of tell somebody else about that when they haven't had the chance to experience that. All I know is that. I want to get the quote right, just because you've been quite open about some of the periods you went through where you were working through different emotions, and I think it was during that time where you were putting out hit movies and hit albums, and you said during that period, for for a part, I was successful, rich, and terribly unhappy. Can you tell us about the emotion you were feeling when when you would have said a quote like that? It's true to say there've been the periods of my life where I've been the most successful and I've had more money than I have now, and I have been unhappy.、Um, I think something I've learned is the more you have doesn't mean you know the happier you are, or it just more things mean more problems and more things to manage.、Um, so. <laughs> I remember having a second home in LA and trying to be J Lo, meant in the nicest possible way. I love J Lo, but you know, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna have. And then I just had, to, you know, to manage two properties and all this. I was like, what am I doing? I can't afford to be doing this. But it's easy to sit there and kind of tell somebody else about that when they haven't had the chance to experience that. All I know is that. Because I've been blessed to have some of those opportunities,、um, the gift of that is I don't need those things. And living simply,、um, there's a lot to be said for it.、And、there's a lot to be said for it because it frees up a lot of space to do things that do make you happy. If you don't have that fire, nobody else is going to believe in you or buy into that either. And it's a difficult industry, so you have to also have a very thick skin. You have to be prepared for rejection. And you have to. This is why I always quote this book,、um, the Surrender Experiment, because I think it's a really good, a really good one for viewing things that seem are seemingly disasters. And we all go through periods where these kind of things happen as opportunities. Like, okay, why would this be happening? What's on the other side of it? Instead of seeing it, I mean, I had writer's block. I'm a singer for more than five years. Um, and for a while, that swallowed me up, and I hid behind that, and I did other things, and I found ways around it. But then, when when I hit it head on, and I found a way through it, I've written the best album of my career, in my opinion, and I've had the most fun. I've been in flow. It's like I can do no wrong, and I think a lot of what changed for me was how I felt about myself. The willingness to fail, the willingness to apply a discipline with something that you could say, "Oh, it's just creativity," and it's like, well, there's still a discipline. You have to show up. You have to be willing to write some bad songs to get the good song, and that's the part that the ego can't handle. That's the part where you're like,、ah. so I just I cried a lot. We laughed at some of the bad songs, <laughs> my managers and I, and. Uh, you know, you just just don't give up. Just don't give up. I wonder too about the the pressure. I mean, you you had a song early in your career that that was just. I mean, it's iconic,、um, extraordinary success. What was that like for you, having one of your early songs take off in that way? I was doing a lot of spiritual practice at that time of my life before that first album came out. I'd met a meditation master, so I was doing. I had a lot of tools, you could say, and my perspective on who I am and what's important. Being that I was famous young, and then you know dove deep into this Eastern philosophy and spirituality and meditation. So I had these really good tools for becoming mega famous again overnight with this song, which was, "This is not me." <laughs> I'm not what I do, and 
you know, what are you going to do with this experience? Keep your feet planted on the ground. And I use those tools to be able to cope with that. Um, and it's transient. I mean, I'd, I'd been famous and then not famous. And then, and so if you, once you go through the rhythm of that, you have no attachment to that. You don't define that as meaning anything other than a result of being on camera a little bit more frequently. So I don't place any importance on those things and I was able to value the good parts of it and um, certainly handle the fact that everybody had an expectation of me after that first album to live up to that. And that I found really hard. That's probably the hardest part was not you know, the celebration of Torn connecting with everyone around the world and my first album doing so well and winning awards. And I mean, that was fantastic. And I made a promise to, to, to enjoy it and savor it in case that's, that was the peak. Um, but it was then writing the second album and that was the, the, the challenge for me. And that's where those tools came into play. So I consider completing that album as one of my greatest achievements under that kind of pressure. What's benefited me is that when you're not oversaturating the market with yourself, it's like people are interested because it's been a while and, you know, I don't really promote myself in between projects. I've got something to say. So I normally have quite a good experience anyway. Um, there was one album that got shelved and didn't get a proper release and that's where my writer's block kicked in. But apart from that, I would say I, I think songwriting for that many, many years, there's a spontaneous wisdom that comes with knowing, trusting yourself. So when I go to a writing session, I don't turn up with homework with like notes and song titles and, you know, because I trust the process and it comes out of the ether. And I, what I do is I get into the energy of the person I'm working with and chat to them, get to know them and have them get into my head. And the song usually just flies in when you do it that way, instead of like trying to fit a poem you wrote last night into this new environment that doesn't work over those chords and it gets clunky. And um, I think I have more fun. I trust myself more. Um, and just years and years of, of practice of doing something repetitively. Um, I can say that I'm getting better at it.